Hi, Harry. Some of the concerns were priced in, but could you give us an update on how the market is taking all this? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. We've had a lot of weakness in, in markets already, um, uh, you know, even before uh, the full scale invasion of Ukraine we're, we're seeing now. We saw a lot of weakness uh, earlier this month and, and indeed yesterday and of course overnight. And we're seeing strong oil prices, Brent above $100, ruble down 8%, some flight to bonds and other safe havens, strong dollar uh, and so on. Um, I mean, what I would say is that, you know, pullbacks in equity markets typically play out in three waves. There's an initial wave of selling, there's a relief rally, and then there's normally a third and final wave of selling in, in which equity markets uh, test their lows from wave one, if not make new lows. And yesterday and overnight, we've now made new lows. We've broken below the lows from wave one in late January. Um, and so, you know, on that basis, this sell off is reasonably well advanced. Now, sometimes equity market pullbacks aren't just three waves. They evolve into a five wave pullback. But, you know, it's our view that this third wave of selling is, is now pretty advanced and there's a lot of bad news in the price. We've got to remember markets are forward looking um, and with the weakness we've already had, they've largely discounted and, and priced in at least the initial phase of this Russian invasion. And as I say, that had become widely anticipated in recent days. So a lot of it's uh, priced in. Typically, as you know, markets follow a sort of buy the rumor, sell the fact price pattern. And I think we've had a lot of that now. We've had sell the rumor and potentially we're going to have buy the fact um, in equity markets over the course um, of, of certainly the next couple of days. Maybe it's the next few weeks. Um, it's a difficult judgment call to make, of course. Um, but look, I think that the other key takeaway here is that this is often what markets do ahead of major events and, and, and invasions. If you look at the way the equity market behaved before the Crimean War, Iraq War, Afghanistan War, it sells off into the event, it rallies after it. So I suspect we're quite advanced now on this third wave of selling. Oil is up more than 5%, gold rallying and the metal prices are higher. How are the different asset classes uh, affected? Yeah, I mean, as you say, it's all of the commodities of which Russia is, is a major producer. So as you say, it's oil, it's also natural gas, aluminium, nickel, a number of other uh, commodity prices that, that Russia has a lot of control over. There's clearly some fear about whether uh, Russia is going to be limiting production of any of those, whether the production, the exports may well be affected. You know, there's some threat of sanctions on Russia, uh, which would exclude it from the SWIFT payment system. And if that happened, you know, then potentially we have a we have a problem with, uh, you know, the trade Russian traded goods, uh, including a lot of these key commodities. So I think a lot of how markets will evolve over coming weeks and months will hinge largely on the Western response, the US response, how severe, how significant will sanctions be? Will Russia be excluded from uh, SWIFT? You know, and, and how do we begin to understand and price Russia's place in the world, Russia's relationships uh, with other nations and its business relationships as well? So I think markets are going to be digesting and pricing all of this over the course of coming weeks. As I say, a lot of fears already in the price. Um, but once I think quite quickly, markets are going to make a decision about whether energy production and exports will be will be impacted and then we'll go from there. And I think if, if it's a low likelihood event that that exports are cut off or limited, particularly energy exports, then I think we're, we've got a much stronger case for a rally, certainly over over coming months um, in, in, in the US equity market. <sighs> And in, in terms of sanctions and response from Biden, etc., what are the different uh, market uh, scenarios going forward? Well, as I said, I think this, this is a really key question. And the severity of these sanctions will, will determine what markets do in terms of how much more downside we have, particularly in the equity market, but then also upside in gold oil, natural gas, other commodity prices, and indeed bonds. We'll see more strength in bonds if these sanctions are severe. We've already seen a little bit of strength in, in, in bonds overnight. So 
as I said, I think the key the key question is whether they're excluded from the SWIFT payment system. Um, you know, we've all, we know about some sanctions already. Generally, the the view in markets is that they've been relatively soft. Um, but this is key, um, and who knows? It's in the hands of these key policymakers. By the way, who will of course be watching, um, you know, and thinking about China's response to all of this as well, because you know China is thinking about. Uh, taking Taiwan. If the U.S. response to Russia is soft, then it makes um, you know China taking Taiwan uh, much more likely, in my view. Yes. Mm. Thank you very much, Harry. Brilliant. Thanks for having me.